draw near unto you, you will draw near unto us. We are here before you, and we have set aside today, being the first Sunday of December, to talk about missions. And we ask that you will minister to us what you have in your mind for today in Jesus' name. Help us to hear you and grant us faith to put to work what you instruct us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, this is the first time coming up here since we came. I came November 13th and came from several activities. So I've uh, been in Ibadan, being in Lagos, being in Niger State, just moving around for several things. And thank God uh, we are here this morning. Today being uh, Mission Sunday, I would like to give a testimony. And then after that, I would like to uh, bring a word from the scripture, what God laid in my heart. This morning in the youth church, we had talk on evangelism. And I was thinking maybe I should share the same thing. But the Lord said no. He gave me something else. Even though we may say some of the things we said earlier this morning. Uh, I want to share testimony about the fact that it's not all the things that we lay on the altar for missions that are completely gone. Not every Isaac that we lay on the altar that is slain and gone. Sometimes God repeats history by giving you back your Isaac, may raise the Isaac. So I want to give testimony uh, on behalf of my wife. She's not here right now. She was here in the youth church, but she's gone for other things. We had a convocation on the 17th of November, uh, like pastor announced in the church some Sundays back. You know, in 1989, when we were to leave UI when I was in the final year about to graduate. Jesus visited me one morning. Very early in the morning, I was praying. And I came around. It was so evident. It was like open vision. I could see him, kind of. I said, Zach, do you about to get what you I will give you? Do I want your certificate? I understood what he was saying. He said, this thing you're about to take now, BSC, whatever. Can you give it to me? Do I want it? Say, look back, how many years you have put into education to get this? And as I calculated, it was 17 years. So I said, yes, Lord, you want more than that? He said, okay. Can you give me? And it was like we were doing drama. I was like, took my hand and I said, Lord, take it. That was the certificate I have not taken. No. I had not written my final exam. But I knew I was going to pass. I knew I was not going to have carryover and all that. I knew I was graduating. So I said, yes, Lord, you want more than that. I said, okay. This is where you stop. No more school. For the rest of your life, just leave it in my hand. I said, yes, Lord. So I knew that I was not going back for masters or for anything. And that morning I heard him say that even if somebody force you. And I asked myself, who oh, force me? You know, over there in the north, it's not even like now. In the, those 80s, once you have first degree, you are one of the people on top. There was no craze about masters and PhD, nothing like that. And actually in Niger State, the course I was reading, they were waiting for me to finish to give me job because we didn't have qualified people on that. I read fisheries. And all the people that were working in the Ministry of Agri that were under fisheries, they were people who just did courses on each fisheries. The highest of them were those that did OND. There was no graduate at all on fisheries. So they were actually waiting for me. So I was wondering what is God saying that even if they force you to come for mass, I said, no more. I said, yes, Lord. So because of that, I didn't even come for my convocation. I didn't come for graduation. I didn't do anything. No when we were leaving, they gave us statement of result. That was all I wanted. I said, God, I'll give you my certificate. So the day they were to do graduation, I was in Nigeria. I went to farm that day, you know. <laughs> I said, my own, I've already given my own certificate to the Lord. So till now, I just get this with you. I, I didn't come back. I said, well. But in the case of my own wife, 
she had had this desire to read to PhD level to be a lecturer in the university. That was her vision. I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lecturer, and all that. So when the issue of missions came, so well, this had to be laid on the altar. Because in Guinea-Bissau, so the time we were going there, there were no universities. So you, there was no issue of lecturing there. No university at all. So for, forget about that. In my own case, there was a test. Like some of you will remember, we have shared testimony before. Like I said, as soon as I finished, got back to Niger State, there was this big project that was working on Kayenji Dam, sponsored by German government. And we had this team of three white men working with, I was now representing Niger State. You know, Kainji Dam, most part of it is in Niger State. So Niger had a big say. So I was representing Niger State. I had not married though. You know how young I was. I'm talking about 1991 now, 1990, 94, I was on that project. These people, they just got to like me. Because three of us that were on top, the other two, one was a nominal Christian, one was a Muslim. So anytime they send us out teams, usually we go out with teams of 10 people, can do two weeks, three weeks, they just give a lot of money. You know, they don't want us to suffer, you know, mostly in the north there. The issue of wealth. So many of those places, there were no filling stations, just black market, no fixed price. So they will give us a lot of money. We'll buy fuel for boats, for cars, because some will go by road, some will go by, by, by water. We had speed boats, we had cars. So you are in charge of all that. People are supposed to sleep in hotel, where there is hotel. Where there are no hotel, we go with tents. We mount up tent. Usually we go with cook, male cook. We do all that. So as much as you spend, you just come back, you fill your phone, vouchers and all that. And then you bring change. I didn't know that those other two colleagues, anytime they go out, they don't come with much change. Because whatever you say you spend, they just stamp it, that's it. But in my own case as a Christian, it's only whatever we spend. And whatever the people are entitled to, they have night allowance, I will give them. So these people keep us, ah, Zach, did these people eat? I would say they ate. Didn't you sleep in your hotel? We slept. Even the people that were sleeping in your hotel, there is category. Those of us that were senior staff, to what limit? These other younger people, or junior staff, to what limit? So I would just spend whatever we are supposed, and I would come with a lot of change. I didn't know that it was an issue. To me, it was just normal. So they kept asking, ah, did you give people this? I said, yes, that, that, that. Because of that, they decided that I was going to head that project by the time they were leaving. And the project was to run for nine years, and I was to head it. So what did they do? They went to Aberdeen University in Scotland and registered me for my master's program to do master's and come back and head that program. They didn't tell me. They wanted to be a surprise because they were so happy with me. They didn't know that I was preparing to go to Guinea-Bissau. So by the time they were through with all the things, they now brought the man that would be my supervisor there. They invited him to come to Nigeria, and then we'll do all the arrangement, and now we go with him to go and do my master's program, and then come back and head the program. It was then they now told me. The lady called me, it's a German woman, said, ah, Zach, tomorrow you are going to Ab Abuja with our senior driver to go and do your passport, da, 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 da. Which passport? I said, yeah, because you are flying out now. She now told me the thing. And expected that we jump on and say, thank you. And uh, I said, ah, you have registered me about the university. I didn't tell me. He said, yeah, I didn't have to tell you. Ah, I said, I'm sorry, I'm not going. You. Ah, and you know, I like jokes. And I'm, you, I was used to joking with them. Sometimes I would just cry. So he talked, I was joking. He said, you, you have started again. I said, no, this is no joke, oh, madam. I'm not going. Because he said, go and get ready. For your trip tomorrow to Abuja, I said, no, I'm not going to Abuja. Very long story. He started like that. I said, what? You are not doing what? He said, you must stay. I said, I'm not staying. I'm going. So she started with a lot of offers. I'm talking about what God told me, what Jesus told me in the camp. That was when it now made me. Need. When Jesus said, even when they beg you, I said, who oh, beg me to go for masters? My father, a farmer, they have just uh, trusted God for us to school to this level. So the woman said, Zach, you are going. I said, I'm not going. He said, God. He called me the next day. He said, okay, get ready tomorrow. We'll go to our papa. We'll go to Lagos. And when we get to our papa port, whatever you see there and you desire, just point to it. I will, I will buy it for you. 
but you are going to stay with us for this program. I said, I'm not going to Lagos with you. Forget about Lagos. If that's the reason, I'm not going. At that moment, my wife already had a master's, master's degree, but was not working because God told us she shouldn't work. Otherwise, we won't go. And this team, they knew that my wife was not working. Each time they asked me, I said, no, she's just at home. She was actually selling fish. Because working on the sea like that, anytime I go, I would just buy a lot of fish. We had big, deep freezer. We put fish there, so she was selling fish. So this woman said, okay, go and call me your wife. I said, my wife, what, what for? He said, no, it's woman to woman talk. I said, but she's my wife. I can't call my wife without knowing why. So I insisted I must know why. She said, yes, I want to give her office here. She will start work tomorrow. I said, which work? Say anything she wants to do. And she will tell me her salary. That once she says social amount, no, no negotiation. We won't debate. Whatever amount she mentioned, that will be her salary. I said, for doing what? I said, for doing anything she wants to do. Already I knew that was a bait for me. And I said, but you will stay. I said, sorry, you will never speak to my wife in this office because she won't come, if that is the reason. The next day she called me because she was not ashamed that she has gone that far. Why would she tell her government? They have already paid for my school there. My supervisor had come to Nigeria. All their rooms. So it was a big shame. What kind of thing is this? This boy must stay. And I said I was not going to stay. The last option she gave me, she called me. She said, you see, Zach, I'm a woman. And I've worked for German government for several years in African country. This is the fifth African country I'm going to win, and they trust me. If I want to speak to your president right now, I can speak to your president. There's nothing I can't do. I said, that's not true. There are things you can't do. <laughs> but I know what you are talking about. He said, I'm just telling you, I'm going to do something for you that I've never done for anybody. But I'm going to do it for you. Because I want you to stay with us. I said, what do you want to do? He said, I'll go to Germany this weekend with all your credentials. And German government is going to employ you. You will become a German worker. They will pay you at our rate in foreign currency. I've never done it for anybody. I'll do it for you. So you will cease to be a worker in Nigeria. You will, you will become like a citizen of Germany because you are not a worker of, of, of German government. So I will do it where you will stay. I said, don't bother to fly. Oh. I'm not staying. You know, of course, at that point, she now, she now said, I know now that you are. She started to abuse me, all kinds of things. She was just mad. She said I was mad, but I think she was the one that was mad that day. You know, there were no phones that day. So they had this radio communication straight to me now to call the governor and to call the director that they should come. Something was wrong with this boy they sent and all that. So many things. The whole of me now shook when they heard that there was a problem. So my director ran down. That same day, the man arrived in Busa in the evening, in the night. Because the woman, I don't know how he spoke to them. We just said that something was wrong with me. Something was wrong. Something is wrong with that, that they must come and say to the matter. So everybody, was, they thought I fought them. I said, but he has been a good boy. What is it? My director arrived in the night. They camp in one hotel. Then he called me. And he's a Christian too from Equa Church. It was like a father to me. So he called me that and I said, what is the problem? He looked obviously, you know, frightened. What is he? So I told him all the story. He said, ah, it's simple. I thought it was one big problem. This is God opening door for you. Missions need money. You just agree with them. Gather a lot of money. Send to the field. You'll be saving some. After nine years, if you are still let to go, you will go. There's no need to, to raise dust about this. The issue of Guinea-Bissau can come up anytime. She, he preached to me. And as though he has convinced me. But inside of me, what I was hearing in my heart is Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau. Not Great Britain. You know, each of them is GB, GB. Guinea-Bissau, Great Britain. <laughs> and Guinea-Bissau and New Bissau also sound very similar. New Bissau, Guinea-Bissau. So Jesus said, your time in New Busa is up. It's now Guinea-Bissau. I was hearing that very clearly. So I started praying, oh God, why will I answer this, Baba? Because it was like a father to me. And he spoke nicely. And it's a matter of nine years. You would have gathered a lot of money. You would have done mission. But I knew God was saying, go. And at that point, I remember Jesus said, even when they beg you to come, no more school. I remember. 
He said, no more school. He, that was when it now made me to me. So I said, God, help me. And this man came, sent by the governor, and said, what is it? I must stay. As I was praying, what to answer? God gave me a word of wisdom. I said, only one question, sir. You know, we don't look to the face of elders. When they are but that day, I looked straight to his eye. I said, sir, I don't have only one question. Can you guarantee that the plane I will enter in Lagos is going to land in London safely? He looked away. I looked again. He said, sir, the only question, can you guarantee? Are you making a pledge? Because now they have arranged for flight. That plane, are you going to guarantee that that plane will last safely in London? Hey, Baba said, no, only God can do that. I said, that's why I won't go. God said, Guinea Bissau, not London, no. The man started crying. Me too, I started crying. I saw Tia running. Me too, I said, both of us started crying. That was how, he didn't talk again. That was how I left the office. I left the hotel. They did, nobody signed my resignation letter. Everybody said I was, I ran away. I ran away. Because they said I won't go. But in the case of my wife, after she had laid down that desire of PhD, after 25 years, God raised up the Isaac. Some of us that are younger, I don't know what God is telling you. Or maybe you're afraid because of one ambition or something that you have. I just want to tell you what I'm telling you this minute. God is not a taskmaster. He's not a bad master. He's not a bad father. He won't cheat you. He won't take the best from you. Trust God that he has the best in his mind for you. So we went to give himself forgetting about everything about PhD. But by 2013, when it was time for our children to come for tertiary institution here, we were now praying, what will she be doing? What will I be doing? We, both of us, are actually not office people. I don't like office work myself. I prefer field work. She doesn't like office work. Too. So what will we be doing? Say so this year, so that we'll be settling our children here because we had friends, we had families that were ready that our children should come and stay with them and we continue in the field. And even our children, that was their own desire, that we should all leave them, we shouldn't leave, we say no. It's our responsibility. We will come to Nigeria because you were born in the field, you raised there, and Nigeria is different from Guinea. Bissau. There will be culture shock. We know that you need us, and it's our responsibility. So we must come. So we decided that we'll leave the field and come. While I'll be going and coming, their mom will be here with them permanently. We say for at least three years. So while she was praying, it came to her, ah, while she is here for at least three years, that PhD didn't work. Maybe she can do it too. So we prayed and I had peace because then God has already told her that this cashew pop that is wasting Guinea Bissau, something can be done about it. So her mind has been on this cashew, the, the, the fruit that they throw away because we just remove the seed they sell. All over Guinea Bissau, and that's our major cash crop. Plantation all over. And it just heaps and heaps all over the place wasting. So that became a body in her heart. Can't we use this thing for something? That was what came to her heart. Maybe she can do PhD on cashew pulp. How to use it for animal feed. I said, okay, fine. He said, well, if I, miss, if I meet Professor Longe in UI, and she says she can pick me up as a student because I don't know when she will retire. But if she says yes, then I will know that's a sign that God wants me to do it. So we agreed on that. And when we came back, met Professor Longe, I said, ah, we don't know where you're about to retire. I want to do a PhD. Can you supervise me? He said, yes, no problem. You can finish. So we knew it was God. Most of you know how she stayed here. Today she's a doctor because she finished. <laughs> but you see, the purpose of that PhD is not the name. It's not the doctor now. And it's not to look for a job with it here in, Guinea, in Nigeria. It is for the field. Because when she was in, people said, so after the PhD, will you go back? Will you go to the field? Will you go to the village? We want to. People are already offering opportunity that she will, she, will, she will lecture. Like some of our friends, somebody is rector somewhere, somebody is registrar somewhere. I said they can give her teaching job, lecturing job. We said, no, it's because of Guinea Bissau. We are going back to Guinea Bissau. And you know, what God did last year, she finished 2019. She went back January last year, 2020. I went to Gambia to receive her. While in the Gambia, there are this German couple, missionaries in Guinea Bissau, who were in, Guinea, in Gambia for holiday. So we went to visit them where they were staying in the guest house. And they said, Ah, can you are back? They knew about her cause. So the lady said, Do you know about so so NGO in Bissau? 
they are into chicken this, pottery that, and all that. She don't say me. We say, I have not had a name. We don't know anything about it. He said, and the leader is a Christian of Soso Church. This is one of the churches that we are used to. So he gave us the contact. He said, talk to them. Maybe this is your work. Might be helpful. By the time we go back to Guinea-Bissau and contact these people, and uh, Cain then went to talk with them. They were so excited. He said, this is what is missing in our project. This aspect of research, this aspect is what is missing. You are just the right person to join us. It was like we are playing. That was as soon as she entered Guinea Bissau with it. They gave her 50 bucks this year to do one small research, try research, that particular NGO with all the feed, with all the materials to use. The result came out, they were so excited. That is earlier this year now. One of our friends, they said, oh, we are interested in this work. This person is in UK now. Say, we are interested in this work because in Guinea-Bissau, we don't have this, we don't have that, we have checked their profile. Okay, we are sending you 1,000 pounds to start one experiment, one research. They, they, they defined the area they wanted. That's why it's on hold now. They have sent the money, the 1,000 pounds, for her to do one research in another sense. As we go back now, she will start on that. But before we came, this NGO, they called her, they said, ah, we want to come and build a research center in Farin. That's where we are. They said, you just give us land. We'll build up the thing. We'll build up the this and that. I wanted to write a project proposal of two years. And we are going to fund it of what they want to do. Because we need this thing here. All that is on the ground now. So we, we <laughs> praise the Lord. Well, I'm telling you that the issue of missions, as we are all involved, God is not wicked. God is true to his word. Before she finished her course, like three years ago, one of our friends, we were colleagues in UI, but it's not in the US. Ah, it's okay, in the, when you finish your course, your convocation, I'll be the one to sponsor everything about the party. We do party, we were not thinking about party. Said, it's just about to finish, and we run away, we go away. If you wear the gun, take picture, we are not thinking about party. I don't want to bother my head about money for party. But that was three years ago, so I said that, uh, God, I lay my heart to sponsor the party. So just tell me when you finish. There was no graduation 2019. There was no graduation last year. It's not this year. I kept saying, say, just tell me when it's time. We thought it was a small thing. We don't know how much he sent, though, but he sent money to one caterer. He said, okay, you don't need to do anything. Anything you want, just tell. Food, though, the drinks, or everything, just tell. So when we came like this, we now called. He said, yes, I've sent money to the caterer. So just tell. So we're now one we have. And because of many people that have been asking, I will say, yes, there will be party. So my wife told the lady that, ah, we are expecting 250 people. You know, for me, that's a big number. He said, no problem, 250. Are you sure that's okay? <laughs> so those of you that went, you saw our house that day. Nothing was done in our house, no cooking. We didn't go anywhere. She was supplied everything. The takeaway, the food there, the kind of meat they put water, drink, for everybody. And after all the people that came, they left some and said, we know more people will come. How much they did, how much the brother gave, I don't know. And we didn't ask. We just knew that even after the convocation, we had surplus flowing over this because they left so much behind. That is what God can do. So, I, I just want to encourage those of us who are parents also. One of the reasons why I'm giving testimony. Don't be afraid if God is calling your child to go. We know the economic situation now. Yet in the midst of this economic situation, God is God. It is in the midst of this economic situation that we, for the first time, will be flying direct from Guinea-Bissau to Nigeria, flying back direct. For some years now, there has been that flight, but very, very expensive. And we can't afford it. We we'll always go through Gambia and then go by road through Senegal, then Guinea Bissau. But this time around, my wife said, Ah, I'm tired of all these trips, so I want to fly direct. I said, I agree with you. We started praying. <laughs> God provided the money. Both of us now, for the first time, she came direct from Bissau to Nigeria. I came through the Gambia still because I went to receive the devotionals of next year that we have done in Creole and to send them by those cargoes to Guinea Bissau. And then from Gambia, I flew here. But we are flying back together on the 14th. The, pay, the ticket is paid through everything. So God's faithfulness, even in the midst of this. 
And that's where your prayer comes in. That's where we are in need together. So I want you to know that God is a faithful God. And that even though we are here as small as we are, God is with us and is using us uh, together to do great things in the nations. I'm not giving other testimonies about Guinea Bissau now because I want us to check the word of God. But I wanted to tell you about this her PhD. So as we are going back now, she is going to land in serious work because people are expecting her to work on this, work on that. And we don't know to what level God is going to carry it. Yet, it is under missions call. So those of you that are young here, don't be afraid. That, oh, my career. Who gives career? Is it not God? And who carries people? Is it not God? It's God. So just believe God. Say, yes, Lord. And my prayer this morning is that each of us will find grace to say, yes, Lord, to whatever I'm saying to us in Jesus' name. Let us read uh, maybe a uh, few scriptures together. First, I want us to read from Luke chapter 12. Somebody will project it for us. Uh, these two scriptures oh, that I want to read now, I talked about it in the morning with the youths, and I want to start with them here. Luke chapter 12, let's read verse 20 and verse 21. Uh, Luke 12, verses 20 and 21. You know the story, the story of the rich fool. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then those, do, uh, then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? 21. So is he that laid up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. This morning what God laid in my heart to share with us is being rich towards God. Being rich toward God. I want to use this opportunity again to thank all of you on behalf of all the missionaries of FMI for all your sacrificial giving throughout this year. And I know by August, many of us have renewed our pledge again for our APO and other commitment. It's working, you know. It's giving increase to the kingdom of God. And you are making yourself rich toward God towards, uh, through that. And the testimony I gave this morning is for all of us, like I always say. And the passages God laid in my heart to share, which is the testimony of a missionary in the Bible to convert. I want you to see that it's all of us that are speaking with the voice of that missionary. Or for all of us to understand that that is how it is with each of us. But let's start from this scripture, because this struck me. Let's have Verse 21, please. Because this verse 21 that I want to talk about. Media, please, verse 21. Luke 12, 21. There, Jesus said directly, that so it is. 21, okay, let me read from here. They are not finding it. Uh, in verse 21, it says like this. So is it. So is he that laid up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. This man was very successful in his business. He was a diligent person. He was a careful person. He was somebody that had multiple income sources, streams. Because being a farmer, from what we read in the Bible, he has farmed different things. Because he said, I break down my bonds. So he has brought in all kinds of goods, all kinds of harvest, different things. And it was so much that I was confident that even if I sit down now, like Pastor was saying this morning, Reverend Flan was saying, and I don't do anything, what I have acquired will be working for me. Because he was so confident, what I have in stock, what I have in savings is enough for me to live for the rest of my life. I would just tell myself, my soul, sit down, rest, relax, eat now. Because your money will now work for you from now on. You have been diligent. You have been fine. You have been hardworking. You have been careful. You have followed the rule. You have invested well. Now, oh my soul, it's time to rest. Relax. It doesn't matter what happens in the, in the country. For the rest of your life, you have enough to live on. 
all this that you have gathered will be working for you. The Bible said, but God said, God visited him that night. He said, you are going this night too. So God asked him a question. And you will read the Bible all over, you will not say any answer. He said, who shall be? All this that you have gathered for yourself. There was silence. You read it from all the gospels silent because immediately the man was gone. No answer. He was gone. When God said, tonight your soul shall be required of it. That was the sentence. Immediately, he was gone. It was like the case of Peter talking to Ananias. I immediately fell down. Or like the case of Peter talking to the wife of Ananias. As I said, the ones that I immediately fell down, he was gone. No answer. And Jesus commenting now. He says, so is he. So is that man. So is that woman. So is that sister. So is that pastor. So is that missionary that is only rich for himself and is not rich towards God. Can you please give me that in LLT, verse 21, if the system is still working? Can we have it? Somebody have LLT here? New Living Translation? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Please repeat it, sir. Okay, we have it here now. Thank you. Yes! Because as I'm talking, somebody is doubting his heart. Somebody is questioning, is this so? He said, yes, it is so. Yes. This thing I'm telling you is yes. Yes. Exactly so. A person is a fool to store up earthly wealth for himself, but not have a rich relationship with God. The one that have only mouth relationship with God. The one that don't have real relationship with God. The one that don't have a relationship that involve their substance. So it's not rich. It's a fool. Even if he has stored up so many earthly things that will now work for him in his old age. Because he's not rich toward God. He said, yes, that person is a fool. This is Jesus talking, no? not me. Who. Are you rich toward God? I want to encourage you this morning that all that we are doing missions, you are only making yourself rich in God. You are not a fool. It's not a waste. That's all God told me to tell you this morning. Now all this mission, mission, thing, all the all this, all this, it's not, you are not a fool because you are being rich towards God. But the others that we gather all, succeed in gathering all, they are diligent, they are this, they are that, they have mastered all the formula. It worked well. Nothing backfired. There was no bankruptcy. Bank didn't even close up. We are not talking about that aspect yet. Everything still worked well. But as long as they are not rich to God, no rich relationship with God, the Bible says that that person is a fool. And Jesus says, so is everyone. So is everyone. Why that is sleeping in church? Why that is going from one pinto to the other, one prayer mantle to the other? As long as you don't have a rich relationship with God, it doesn't involve your substance. It doesn't cost you anything. It's only gathering, gathering, gathering for yourself. You are so, so mindful of your future that you are not mindful of the future of any other person. The Bible said that so we will live be with that man because he will leave everything here and he has nothing to meet over there. That's why Jesus in John, can you please give us John chapter 6 verse 27? Let me read it from King James. I want you to give me John 6, 27, NLT. John 6, 27. In King James, it says like this. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him at God the Father sealed. In that's King James. Please give us new living translation. The one says, but don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. Don't be so concerned. So concerned. It's not that you should be concerned at all. But don't be so concerned. Don't live your life just for perishable things. Jesus is not saying we shouldn't work here. He's not saying we shouldn't labor here. But don't live your entire life. Don't give your entire time, your everything about you, so only for perishable things. Don't labor just for perishable things because you are not rich toward God when you do that. Labor for soul. Labor for eternal things. 
labor that will be rich toward God. So don't spend all your being, all your time, all your investment, all your wisdom, all your knowledge on perishable things. That's why we are not fools in this church. As we are saying missions, mission. We are thinking about those in the field, those in the nation, those that have not been rich. Jesus, that was what he said. Yes, we are living because we must live in the physical. So we should work, we should labor, we should sustain this body. But don't let this body, don't let this body, don't let this body, this king, this Caesar, don't let him be alone. Don't let him be everything, I want to say. That was why Jesus Christ said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. But remember to give to God what is God's. That's what mission is all about. It's not saying that we shouldn't give to Caesar. It's not saying that we shouldn't give to ourselves. It's not saying that we shouldn't treat our body. It's not saying that we shouldn't build for ourselves. We shouldn't build house or buy a good car. No. But while you are doing that, brother, while you are doing that, sister, remember to give to God that which is God so that you'll be rich toward God. That you are not only rich in the camp of Caesar and you are poor in the camp of God. You won't be wise by doing that. As you are laboring to be on big social status in the camp of Caesar, labor also that you have a befitting mansion in the camp of God. By being rich toward God. And how? These things we are talking about. Our labor together. Jesus said, even if it is one soul that we succeed in bringing to the Father, there will be joy in heaven. There is festivity in heaven because we labor together and we got one soul. I could imagine the joy that Reverend Fulani had this morning. Same brother David in church. Yes, which pastor will not be happy? When you see a new soul come, a new member come. But Jesus said that even heaven that are very spiritual, even the spiritual people in heaven, they put aside their spirituality and begin to dance when one soul is delivered from darkness and enter heaven. That they are giving all the investment for us to combat the kingdom of darkness and draw people out. When we succeed in bringing everyone out, they are happy. Angels begin to dance. They begin to make melody just for one soul. So even if we say that our mission fee without big church is that it's not even if it is one soul. Jesus said, as long as you have done it to one little of this of my father, it is to me you have done it. It's to me. Even if it is one we're able to affect in every of our mission field, Jesus will still say, thank you. You have done well. Because one has come out of darkness. How much more when God begins to bless the work and we are seeing more than one? How much more when God is using us to disciple nations? How much more when so many are being raised into ministry themselves? Plenty churches everywhere. Are you rich toward God? How rich are you toward God? We all have opportunity to be rich toward God. Where we are treating our body well, where we are mindful of our social status here, be rich toward God. Labor to be rich. Jesus said, do not labor. Do not be so concerned. Do not be so concerned about perishable things. Be concerned, yes. But not be so concerned that you are not concerned about souls. He's talking about balance here. We are talking about balance here. Galatians chapter 6, 9, and 10. I'm talking in light of our involvement in mission as a church. You as a person. John Elliot, Elliot, Jim Elliot said, that person is not a fool who gives what he cannot keep that he might gain what he cannot lose. You can't keep anything. <laughs> you know, you can't keep anything. So whatever you can keep, you give it out so that you will gain what you can lose. He said you are not a fool. You are not a fool. All that you are giving, you are giving, you are giving to mission. Because really you can't keep anything. And what you are gaining, or what you are going to gain with that. Oh, you know. Paul said that the little trial, the little suffering, the little giving we are doing now. On this side of eternity, it cannot be compared with the great weight of glory that awaits us, that the little, little suffering we are passing through now because of missions. You can't compare it to the great glory that is acquiring for us. They say, no, it's not incomparable at all. That this little investment you are doing now, what is gathering for you over there? He said, you can't imagine it. That was why even when it came to the point that we died daily, it's not a problem. City stored. He said, if Jesus Christ truly is God. I came 
and died for me physically. Then, there is no sacrifice that is too much for me to do for him. That if I believe truly that Jesus is God, and Jesus for the sake of love for me, for humanity, he came down, took this place, and physically suffered all he suffered, and went to the cross. He said, if I'm thinking correctly, then there is no sacrifice that is too much for me to do for him. And Smith, Wigglesford, he said, the art of apostles was written or came to be because the apostles acted. We only have the art of apostles because the apostles acted. If they didn't do anything, there would be nothing of the art of apostles. And we are all apostles. You know that word apostles is why we are just a missionary now. So if the missionary do not do anything, there will not be acts of missionary. No acts of apostles. They acted. And so we have acts of apostles. And we should act. Thank God we are acting at the level we are acting. But maybe God is telling you that you can act more. And maybe you are getting tired. You are getting weary. That's why I want to read Galatians 6, 9, and 10 now. Because it's like God says, some are getting weary. Maybe you are getting discouraged. In Galatians 6, 9, and 10, it says, And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Is that a word for you this morning? As we have opportunity, do good to all men. And I tell you, we have opportunity. <laughs> we have opportunity. The mission field is open. We have opportunity to do good to men. I say to all men, even to Boko Haram, do good to all men. Yes, especially those of the household of faith. And as we win them from the group of all men, they become men of us of faith. Our disciples, their needs, we do good to them. So he said, don't be weary. Don't be tired. Don't be weary in FEO giving. Don't be weary, brother. Don't be weary, sister. Don't be weary, daddy. Don't be weary, mommy. You are giving, you are giving, you are giving. Yes, don't be weary because you will reap if you do not faint. God is faithful. That's why I started my testimony. That God, everything is on record. Everything is on record. And what do I do? We transcend. We outlive us. Paul, long gone. All the scriptures that we have now, they were written, most of them, when he was in the prison, he didn't know that they would become scriptures. He didn't know that they would become sacred words. They were just let us send In prison. It was a suffering. If Paul was not in prison, we won't have all the epistles that we have today. Because we'll be going from church to church to teach. But because he was in prison by the wisdom of God, and he agreed, and we even sing to God, even in prison, then God gave us this scripture because God knew what he was doing. God was not being wicked to Paul that they will lock him up and become a prisoner, a criminal, as if he was a criminal. God knew what he was doing. So whatever is happening to you now, just know that God knows what he's doing. I'm sure that Dr. Luke, eh, that medical doctor, Dr. Luke, that did he train in linguistics and, 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 and uh, writing, who suddenly started to become a, 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 a journalist behind Paul, just jotting down what is happening every day. A medical doctor left all his profession and was just jotting down after Paul. And we have the whole of Acts of Apostles today. We have the whole of Luke. He never knew that this is what it will come. It will become. He was just writing story. Actually, do you know that these two letters, they were written to one man alone. Written to Theophilus. He was just right. Can you imagine a doctor sitting down? Medical doctors, I don't know. Many of them, don't, they, don't, they, they, they don't like the issue of writing. You know, people that do science. But look at Dr. Luke now sitting down writing. If I ask you to go and copy now the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, you know how long it will take you to copy it. And he sat down writing like a letter to one man alone. He wanted to win one man. He wanted to convince one man. And he started writing the story of Jesus. He was writing to one man. The same day of apostle, he wanted to write the episode, what he himself experienced. The one of Luke was what he was told. The one of us is what he himself experienced. And he was writing just to one man. Imagine the Bible without acts of apostles. Imagine the Bible without the book of Luke. Imagine the Bible without 40 epistles that Paul wrote. That Bible must be very poor. But these people did it willingly, not knowing what was ahead. But they were just obeying God. They were not weary. 
They were not weary. They did it with all their hearts. And where they are now, I think it will just be raising hand. Father, thank you that you gave me the grace to go to the end. Thank you. So these people, they gave themselves the whole of their being to it. How much of yourself are you giving? He said, don't be weary in wedding. Brothers and sisters, it is well doing that we are involved in mission. Missions is well doing. That we are concerned about somebody's life and not just their physical life, their whole being, their spirit, soul, and body. That our labor is not only that they be delivered, you know, from, from, from darkness about their soul. We also seek to educate them. We also seek to give them medical attention. We also seek to help them in their economy. We tried to rest like this page that my wife did. That was the only body. Why is so much thing being wasted that would have brought income, that would have brought money, that would have raised the economy of this land? That's the only thing you know, about that cashew pop that we're doing. To raise the economy. All the believers that have plantation, unbelievers that have plantation, to bring a change. To make life better for people with what is already there that has been wasted away. But somebody must show them that this is where you are waiting. We are wasting like this. But it's only because we went that we saw it. If we were here, we wouldn't have seen it. So God is asking you, are you weary? It's well you are doing, you know. What you are involved in is well doing. Don't be weary. Don't give up. Because you will reap. If you don't faint. If, it means that if we faint, we may lose our reward. If we faint. Before the time. I want to read... Testimony of Paul to the Corinthians. Let me do that quickly. I think my time is... I didn't check the time when I was starting. Sorry. Let me read two. And then I make a quick comment. And that is what God wanted to hear. Maybe something is happening. Let's start from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'll read 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. He said, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Can you see that? I like that. As sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many people rich, as having nothing ourselves, and yet we possess all things. This is missions. Those of us that are involved in missions, this, this is our lot. At your level, it seems as if you are poor. But even with our poverty, what you see yourself as poor, that your standard is not this, your standard is not that. Even with that, what you are doing here, the little contribution you are doing here, do you know what you are doing? You are making many rich. Even when you and yourself, you are looking poor like this. But your own involvement in mission life, that little that you are doing, the prayer you are praying, you are making many people rich. It's as if you have nothing, as having nothing. You don't have a house yet. You don't have a car yet. Yet, because you are involved in mission, what are you doing? He said, know that you possess all things. Why? Because you are rich toward God. You are rich toward God. Maybe you had... You had been moved to postpone one project, to delay one project, because there was a call, and God let you have that you should give. So maybe even what you were saving, you took part of it, and now you couldn't do what you were supposed to have done at that time. You are not a fool, though, because it looks as if you have nothing. But look, bro, the Bible says that you possess all things. That's why I say, all things are yours. All things are yours. Whether Peter, whether Paul, whether riches, whether gold, all things are yours. All things are yours. You know how much we spend on golden earrings and chains. Anything that is real gold, you know how much we spend. But one day, as I was meditating and thinking about the street, the street of heaven, the street that I said that they are all of gold, you know, it just occurred to me. And since then, I've not ceased to say it to my youth, that even if there is dust in heaven, the dust in heaven is gold. Even if there is dust that can't pass, if they use car at all, and something pass you and raise dust, even dust in heaven is gold, pure gold, not even like our own. If what we match on the floor is gold, how much more the bed that we sleep on? 
How much more the wall, the, the house? That thing, the lowest of the place, what you match, what you match like this. And they say it's gold. They will be working on gold, be matching gold. That is, yeah, yeah, nothing is there. How much more where I will sleep? You know, for the first time, I laughed at myself. In 2015, when I had the opportunity to go to years. That one is another testimony of his own. I don't know why it came to my head now. We're talking about mission doesn't limit us. By 2015, I was 50 years. I celebrated 50 years. And I just pray one simple prayer. I say, God, give me birthday gift. Oh, this one is special. They call it golden jubilee. So God, give me, give me golden jubilee gift of 50 years. I prayed it like that, and I forgot about it. And I don't know how many weeks after, I got a letter that looked funny. That Zach, that this conference uh, you have been slated for to come and attend. And if you're interested, let us know so that we send you all that details. And you know, this issue of 411 everywhere. So my wife said, be careful. I said, why are you afraid? I don't have money in my account now. So <laughs> I said, people that have money in their account, that, are, that should be afraid. There's nothing in my account. Anybody will do me. There's nothing to pay. Yeah. So I said, let me play along with them. So I wrote back. I said, I'm interested. And so send me the document. You know, just sleep pray. I said, when I get to a point, I will not preach to them very well when they ask me for money or something. But the letter came, they sent all the things that you take to the embassy to ask for. They gave all their details and committed themselves that they are going to pay all my expenses, the travel, the stay, everything. I gave their accounts for the embassy to verify. Sir, is this thing true? So <laughs> I told GMD. So we prayed. I said, I said, okay, let me play along now. So they sent the thing. They said, we'll send your ticket when you get the visa. So go and apply for visa. You know, I can't apply for visa in Guinea Bissau. There's no American embassy that gives visa. So I had to go to Gambia. But to that point, they didn't ask of money. So I said, it may be true, so let me go. But this conference, who is there? The few missionaries that had worked in him said I knew they were American. I wrote them. They said they don't know anything about them. So I felt that maybe one of them is their church. All of them, they said no. There were three of them that I knew. They said, we don't know anything about it. So I got the visa. That one is another testimony. You know, the issue of visa with Nigeria. I got to Gambia. And that day that I got to Gambia, we were doing our training I went to the center that you are planning and all that. I said, I want this thing now. I came from Guinea. They said, no, your interview might be in two weeks' time. You know, people are many that, that, that say, no, I can't stay here for two weeks. I'm from Guinea. I'm very busy there. And I must go back. And so I told the lady, I said, just check. The earliest date. He said, I've told you the earliest date is two weeks. I said, no. So, of course, they had my number. I went home to Pastor Chine Dusa. Like four hours later, there was going to be interviewed the next day. So, like four hours later, I got a call. He said, is that Mr. Zakio? He didn't call the name very well. I knew it was Zakio one day. I said, yes, it is me. He said, I'm calling from the American embassy. Are you ready for interview tomorrow? I said, if it is now, I'm ready. He said, we don't know what happened. No. We just suddenly discovered that there is a, a, a slot tomorrow that we didn't feel. We don't know what happened. So I said, that is for me now. I've told you. I'm coming. <laughs> like play. I got to the place. There were two people interviewing. One a lady, one a man. And all the people that went to the man, it was said, no, he was returning their passport back to them. <laughs> the lady wants to the wife gives to some people. So every one of us sitting waiting for that, we're just and letting not be to the man. They were saying, let it be the woman. Suddenly it was the man that called me. I said, oh, God. <laughs> so I got to the man. He looked at me. He said, you're a pastor. I said, yes, I'm a pastor. He said, what are you going to America? I said, like it's in my document for a conference. He said, okay, you're going for a conference. How long? I said, I said, just as soon as the conference is over, I'm coming back. He said, okay, yeah, pastor. I said, what is the last word that Jesus said on the cross? I said, it is finished. As soon as he said that, I knew that the interview was over. I said, it is finished. He said, come and take your visa next tomorrow. Like play. They gave me two years. <laughs> that was the interview. We did two minutes. I was done. Till that time, I didn't know who was behind this thing until I got to years. This, as soon as I got the visa and I sent it, they sent the ticket. And the ticket came. I was now to go through, I, I, I was to go through France. So which means that we need another transit visa. I wrote the people, I said, I'm sorry, I'm very busy. I can't get visa for France now. I want to fly directly from Africa to U.S. Either from Gambia or from Senegal straight. That one, I don't need visa. Ah, they said, okay, sorry, it's going to cost some more, but we're going to do it. So I don't know how much it costs, but they changed my ticket. To now fly directly from Dakar to, 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 to U.S. direct. So I was still curious, who is this person? Who is this person? I thought that when I arrived, somebody would surprise me. I thought that this person is a surprise, is planning. I didn't see anybody. I knew nobody. People came from 32 countries. And I didn't know anybody. So I said, what is this? So the man that will be corresponding with me, with email, 
One Pastor Jimmy. So I said, Pastor Jimmy, sorry, I have a question. That was the second day, and I was just, I was just being curious. So I said, how did you get my name? Because I don't know who, who uh, nominated me. He said, you are from where? I said, from Guinea-Bissau. He said, where is Guinea-Bissau? He knew nothing about Guinea-Bissau. I told him, he said, I don't know. I just saw your name. I don't know. Ah, you don't know? He said, he doesn't. The third day, I asked him again. The fourth day. So he said, I said, we said, okay, wait. Our senior pastor travel, he will be coming back. When you come, I will ask him. So the senior pastor came, like five days to the conference. So he took me to, he said, this person is worrying me about who nominated. So the senior pastor to us, he said, your name, I told him, well, friend, I said, Guinea Bissau. He said, where is Guinea Bissau? He didn't know that it was in Africa or in Asia. He said, I had not had the name before. So I said, who nominated? How did you get me? He said, I don't know. He said, are you not happy to be here? I said, I'm happy to be here, but I want to know how. He said, me too, I don't know. Brethren, you know, long story short, till today, I don't know who put my name. Till today. It was when we were finishing that conference that I was praying. I said, God, he said, God now reminded me, he said, didn't you ask for a 50th anniversary gift? I just want to tell you that all this America, America, they say there's nothing. I flew three times in America from one to the other, to the other, to the flight within America. When I was coming back, they gave me dollars again, cash. How they got my name today, I don't know. We are talking about God. We are talking about God. And God said, that was just your 50th anniversary gift. Just to tell you that even though you are in the bush there, I know you are there. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing, yet possessing all things. Why? Because we are rich toward God. Do you want to be rich toward God? You have opportunity to be rich toward God. If you will not desist from the opportunity. He said, as we have opportunity, let's do good to all men. And we have opportunity, brethren. We have opportunity. Let me read the last scripture. Because I said that time has gone. But please, just permit me to read it. And let's go to chapter 4 of that same Second Corinthians. And then let me read verses. Let me read from 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness and shine in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in 18 verses, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life, of, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death worked in us, but life in you. That's Paul talking to the new convert. And that is what you may be passing through. But in the midst of all this, the promise of God, the purpose of God, for as many of us as are involved in mission, let me read that verse. He said, we are troubled, verse 8, on every side. I know there is trouble on every side now, <laughs> at least in Nigeria. Trouble on every side. He said, yet, no distress, we can have our peace. If you are involved in God's work, with all trouble everywhere, no distress, have your peace, because you are rich toward God. Your father is, is in charge, he's, in, he's, he's concerned. He said, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Everybody is perplexed in Nigeria now. Some of the news you will hear, you say, is it true? <laughs> you don't be perplexed. <laughs> How on earth is it true? Yesterday, somebody posted, uh, the, the one post in one of the platforms that I was in. I don't remember the name now, but one of these, the, the roads to the east. And they stopped somewhere and they said, they, they, they kidnap people, they are bought the driver and the people, and there is a house nearby, and the police checkpoint used to be there. I don't know if anybody saw that point in the post yesterday. So people were asking, the people that did the video, because so many vehicles had to stop, that in the daylight, these people came and stopped that bus and carried everybody away. And that house that was not far from the road when they got there, because the people were saying, what happened, what happened? When they, they got so many ammunition, so many bullets, so many things that they brought her in the day there. And they say, this place, police normally mount a check there. So how come that people are operating here and they don't know about it? Things that you don't be perplexed about. That's what led me to that now. So many things that are perplexed. Yet he said that for a believer, you that is working with God, you that is a co with God, you should not be despair. You should not despair. You may be persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. People may say there is a casting down, but we will say there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. Let me read the last verse and we pray. Thank you, sir. So the last verse which I want to share with us 
is Acts 15, 25 and 26. Can you please project for us? Acts 15, 25 and 26, yes. This is testimony of the apostles concerning Paul and Barnabas. He said, it seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Verse 26. Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is where I want to end. Men, women, brothers, sisters, who deliberately have hazarded their lives. They have put their lives in danger. They have endangered their lives. For the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not that they were stupid, not that they were careless, not that they were foolish. No. Barnabas sold all that he had. Why he qualified to say this? Why Barnabas enter here? You remember the story. Actually, his name was not Barnabas. It was Joseph by name. They gave him Barnabas because he was that his life. Ton of consolation. He sold all that he had and brought everything, all the proceeds to the, to, the, to, to the feet of the apostles. He has added his future. He laid his future down. All his inheritance. All that will be working for him tomorrow, he brought it and lay on the altar of missions. Because his mission they were doing. He has added his future. All that he would have said, this is what I will live for. This is the guarantee for my future. He sold everything and brought it, lay it down. Paul laid down all his certificates after he has had that encounter with the Lord. His prestige, all his political connection, the position he had as a militant. Oh, now whatever party there was that time that was ruling because somebody that had authority to go and ask for letter to keep people and nothing to come out of it. You know that he was not a small man. No? <laughs> he was a high-powered youth leader with high-powered government connection. He was known. Somebody that when they were stoning Stevie, he sat like they said, put your clothes. Let me see who will challenge you. Yes, I ordered the killing. Stone him. And now that same person is not preaching Christ. And then there is life that they have to put it inside basket to escape for his life. A professor inside basket to, to escape death. He has added his life. But it was for the sake of Christ. Not for the sake of his stomach. Oh. Not because he was stupid. Not because he wasn't smart. Not because he was hypnotized. No. It was deliberate for the sake of Christ. Men that has hazarded their life. Can you please give that to us? That same verse 26. NLT. Or oh, the message. I've never checked that. I don't know what they say. But let's see. This is NLT. Who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Risk their life. Risk their future. Risk their business. They have risked their investment. For the sake of Christ. It was the investment of Barnabas that he risked like that. He put all down. I'm not saying you should go and do the same. I'm just saying that there are things we can do for the sake of Christ that the heavens will ring bell. That even hell will ring and say, wow, this guy is, is a terrible person. You know? See what he did. Mark him. You know that Ananias, that was what provoked him. And he ended up dying with his wife because they didn't find grace to do it. It's not easy to lay all your investment, all your future, all your labor for everything you account. You put it down. I think it was Baba Debo that gave his own testimony. Some of you will know about this now. That the founder, when they were building church at the point, I said that all the leaders should go and close their bank account. They should go and close the bank account and bring all the money there. He was the only one that did it with his wife. He has added it. So why will he not be wise? So you be, be careful how you talk. Oh. If he's flying plane today, be careful how you talk. Oh. Have you ever closed your account for the sake of Christ before? And you are talking anyhow. Be careful. I know that it was a small boy. Oh. Know that it was a student too. Oh. That somebody would have said they cajoled him. He was already a lecturer. And you know that he's intelligent. Mathematics teach person. <laughs> so I'm just telling you that it's not that somebody cajoled him. It's not that somebody dribbled him with all his intelligence. They analyzed the day. Yet, for the sake of Christ, he obeyed that order. If it is for Christ, let's go and close the account. People that hazard their life for the sake of Christ, that nation should be rich. It's on record. So this was recommendation of men. How much more recommendation of God? This were men writing here. Barnabas, Paul, men who hazarded their lives, hazarded their future. 
has said everything about themselves. They didn't care what will happen to our children, what will happen to them. They all look for the Lord. What will you do for God? I want to give you opportunity this morning. Two calls that God laid in my heart. One, actually you know that God is saying you should go. But something is frightening you. It's like something is doing woo like this to you. You? Anytime you want to some you hear like you, you, and you're afraid. You are holding back. I don't know whether it's one ambition or something. But something inside of you tells you that you should be going, you know. But somebody say, check where, well, though. Don't be foolish, you. This morning, God is saying, come. It's me saying you should go. I'll be faithful. I'm not wicked. I won't disgrace you. I am God. The second good is those who God has laid something in their heart. These are two things God laid in my heart to make call to pray with you. There's something you want to do, but you have not found the power to do it. It's in your heart to do it. It's your desire to do it. You have been praying about maybe three years, two years, or maybe in the last few months, I don't know. But there's something you really want to do as touching mission. But you've not found the substance. You've not found the help. You've not found the means to do it. Yet it's born in your heart. God wants me to pray with you. Because he gives power both to will and to do of his good pleasure. If you are in this category, I will invite you to come and we pray together. Because I'm sorry, time has gone. But this is why I'm stopping. So God is calling you. Uh, you, you know that God is saying, Go. It might even be short term. Even for short term. You want to go for short term, people have gone for short term, but something is frightening you. But you know that you should be going even for short term. Just come. I don't know what I say, you, you, because that's what I had in my head. They say you, the devil just want to say you, and I just believe to you like this. But it's not about you now. It's about Christ. It's not about you. I would like to pray with you. And the other one, let me just repeat. Something God has laid in your heart. You desire it. But it's been a struggle. The means, the means. And God said, because you have desired, because it's in your heart, I will help you. You can join us. I'd like to invite Pastor Lucia Laprisa. We are going to pray for us. If you want to join, you can still come. Faithful Father, we just want to thank you for a time like this. Almighty God, we thank you for your word. It has come with clarity, with simplicity, and with power. Thank you for your children that has come out responding to your love and to your call towards their life. We know it's not by power of our might, but by your spirit. Lord, we just look up unto you for grace, for strength, for ability to put what they sense you doing in their life in the name of Jesus. Lord, so much distraction, so much noise around them. The Lord, it has pleased you to take them out of that noise that they could hear your word. And you are spoken to your servant. And we remember that rich man in heaven that said, please can you send prophet so that they can warn my people on heart. And God told him, I have my servant speaking to them. If they don't hear them, even though I send an angel, they won't hear him. And so, Lord, you are sending your servant with your word uncorrupted, undiluted. And, Lord, your word has come. And, Lord, we, your people are responding by faith to come to the altar to identify. Lord, with all humility, we just come to pray that whatever you need to do, Whatever you need to work out in their life to help them, 
to attain to your purpose for their life, do in the name of Jesus. I just pray that as many as have heard this word today, the word will draw them closer to you. And we take them to the place of destiny. For many are laboring in this world, trying to get to where you did not send them, trying to be where you have not approved for them to be. And I just pray that you will so much help us that every life will be rearranged by your divine order, by your divine power to make us to be who you want us to be in Jesus' name. I just pray that, Lord, that beyond what we could pray you will do for us, and we will look back today and we say thank you uh, for bringing us your word. Thank you, faithful Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Please. Uh